OK, welcome. Welcome to our first uh, HCPC uh, My Standards event. Uh, really um, glad that so many people could join us today and it's lovely to see you on this beautiful uh, sun, bit of a Sunday. Really pleased that you're here joining us today. So this is the first of our uh, HCPC standards events that we're running. Uh, we're running a series um, of 10 um, and what we're going to cover today um, in the next sort of 50 minutes is the role of the uh, HCPC. We're going to have another look at that. Um, I know that you know what it does, but we'll just review what it does and how it supports you. We're looking to focus specifically on standard one. Uh, some of the HCPC reports which are really important that you're aware of and some of the support that we can offer you as, as our registrants and how to get in touch with us if you need to um, you know at this time really I think that's really important so that's what we're going to cover today um, before we start um, I wanted to say hello hello my name's Kim I'm a professional relationship uh, consultant at the HCPC um, and I'm joined today by a few other colleagues but firstly just let me do a little bit of background to hello my name is because I think we're, we're all sort of used to hearing about it and we've all probably seen it on our on lanyards and name badges of people in, in hospitals, but this is my very proud uh, name badge that I use um, as I'm a staff nurse in a hospital. But uh, some people um, might have forgotten who actually started it, and it was started by Dr. Kate Granger, who was an amazing uh, geriatrician, elderly care consultant, who was in her 30s and unfortunately died a couple of years ago now of a very rare sarcoma. Um, she, what she did was she, she really thought about what it was like to be both a patient and a doctor and I think for those of you who are listening today who've been a patient you will know that it actually changes the way you you care for patients after you've been a patient yourself because actually it suddenly becomes you suddenly realize probably how vulnerable you are and how unpleasant it is being a patient and actually that being a patient gives you a, a unique perspective in what it what it's actually like uh, to be cared for so she talked about what it was like to be cared for and she wrote fantastic blogs and uh, lots of articles and actually wrote a book about being a patient and a doctor but one thing she noticed was that when she was in hospital there was only one um, person who introduced himself to her and that was the porter who was wheeling her to x-ray apart from that people used to come into the room and care for her and she didn't know who they were now they didn't introduce themselves with their name, but she knew who they were because of their uniform, because she was lucky enough to be in the healthcare profession. So she was able to identify a doctor, a nurse, a physiotherapist. But actually, we know that other people, other clients probably don't can't identify people. So she started a campaign, a fantastic campaign called Hello, My Name Is. And I just wanted to use it as a reminder today because I think it's something that I think is really important. It's about making that instant connection with your with your clients. And that's really important. And it's uh, I'm, as I said, I'm very proud of my my name badge. So hello, my name is Kim. As I've already said I'm a nurse by profession and I'm employed by the HCPC. So I'm sort of hosting the session today but I'm um, fantastically joined by a couple of my colleagues who are kindly going to introduce themselves to you because I think it's really nice that you know that they're there. Um, so Kelly could I come to you first if you wouldn't mind? Yes good afternoon everyone. Um, hello my name is Kelly. I am Kelly Green. The professionalism That's and upstream okay. technological technology is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Really, <laughs> Holly, can you speak, Holly? Then Holly's from our media yep. team, Holly, and she's been really yep. instrumental at sorting out the event today. Hi there, my name's Holly Butler. Um, I'm the events and communication. Officer now, at Holly, the I can't hear you either. I'm not sure why, but do you know what? That's that's just the wonder of technology today, isn't it? So Kelly is the head of the outreach service, the professional liaison service um, at the uh, HCPC. Oh, look, she's then. Are you? Can you speak now, Kelly? I hope so. Can you hear me? I'm not Probably on the Probably not, and I don't actually know why, but that's just technology. You, Kelly. Yeah. And Holly is kindly, as I said, in our media and press team. And Holly will be, Holly and Kelly, and also Olivia is also from our policy and standards team, will be monitoring our chat box um, and answering your questions. So I'm sorry they can't say hello to you in person, but I know that they would want to. Um, and uh, they're here and they've given up their time to, to come and talk to you today. Um, so that's really, really good. So hello, my name is really important. So a few sort of features about today. Um, we will started as, as you know at one o'clock and we will finish about 10 to 2 because we know that you've probably got some clients or you may have even have a client booked in for two o'clock uh, some of you so we think it's really important to, to make sure that we run to time there is lots of opportunity to ask questions this is your opportunity to ask ask the HCPC any questions you want to know and they'll be published on our chat box which is to the right of your screen if you just want to type into the chat box they'll be published with your net along with your name and Olivia Holly and uh, Kelly will be answering those answering those um what's the word questions and seeing what they can answer for you which will be really great um just to say that also we i wanted to let you know that you will be used using your phone and you'll see that i've put a couple of announcements up that you will be using your phone uh, during the event so i've got my phone here to actually um 
work the uh, Slido, which I'll talk to you about in a minute, the Slido, but actually what we want you to be aware of that is that some of the slides will have some information with some links and some contacts and we will make sure that we send these to you after the event but just in case you want to take any pictures of the uh, pictures of the slides sometimes I do that during conferences I find it quite useful um, you're all on mute teacher I struggle with this an awful lot because um, normally in a classroom I wouldn't sort of go you can't speak but we're in a different world at the moment we're delivering this virtually I would absolutely adore to be in a, a classroom in a in an event place somewhere meeting you all and having a coffee with you all but we can't so we're doing the best we can we're delivering it virtually for you um, and it just means that unfortunately you are on mute so the only way you can contact us is the chat box so please do ask questions if you'd like to I think that's really important um, okay so we will be using something called Slido later on which is a polling app um, but before we do that I just wanted to talk to you about GDPR something that's really important just to know that your personal details that you gave us to register for this event have only been used for this event you will at the end of the event be sent a survey um, and we will also um, then send you a certificate that you can use for your CPD um, and as, as I said your name will be published in the uh, broadcast but any comments you make we might use for our marketing and advertising because they're always usually really valuable so so that's a little bit about GTPR so this is a bit about the polling you might have used Slido before at conferences I've certainly used it at conferences I think it's a really clever 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 app because it's the nice thing about it is that when you enter the app yourself you don't actually have to put your details into it so it's an anonymous polling message it, they're not collecting your data in any way shape or form they don't have your data so I think that's that's really important so we're going to use Slido so on your phone if you just want to type in as it says there look for um, www.sli.do it takes you to the Slido app any problems do put in the chat um, we might be able to help you with a bit of technological support but um, you know if we can do we will do but it's fairly intuitive and at various points during the presentation quick questions will come up on the on the screen and you can actually vote which is fantastic so before we start the voting because that's quite an exciting part or no before actually at this point we'll, we'll do a little bit of voting I think that might, might be quite nice um, just to get us started really and get us into it so let me log on to my phone which I already had done so what I want to do now is if you could say or you could vote what professional group do you belong to now because the HCPC regulates 15 professions you'll see that actually if you go down the screen and in no particular order just to point out I haven't actually um, put these in any particular order except that they were in that order on the website um, and I've just thought it'd be really nice to see who's in the room so to speak if only we could see who was in the room it would be really nice and I can see and you can probably see um, that actually we've got quite a lot of physiotherapists here the most the highest number of registrants on our register is physiotherapists I don't know if you know that but it's quite interesting isn't it that quite a lot of physiotherapists are actually on our website I've got the number written down here it's 56,000 physiotherapists on our website and the second uh, largest profession is occupational therapy of 40,000 occupational therapists and we got quite a few paramedics joined us which is really nice uh, and I'm just going to go down to my screen to see if um, we haven't got anybody from who's a hearing aid dispenser but we've got some ODPs some radiographers who I've been working quite a lot uh, with during uh, COVID some of our ODPs were fantastic they were I weren't an intensive care nurse and I was working in intensive care and they were seconded to intensive care to work with with us which alongside us which was fantastic um, we also uh, there's a fantastic um, app from a speech and language therapist who actually came into ITU quite a lot and was helping our post-COVID patients with their swallowing, post-tracheostomies who were fantastic as well and obviously you biomedical sciences you've been Officers, you, uh, you've been working really hard. So there we go. That's really helpful, and it's great to see that it's working. It is fantastic. I'm, I'm so, I'm so chuffed with that. Sometimes technology, when it does work, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So let's go back to the polling. So let's go back to my presentation, if that's okay. Um, and I wanted to start the presentation after we've done that bit of polling to say thank you. You know, thank you to you all being here, but also thank you from the HCPC for the work that you do uh, as registrants. I think particularly during this pandemic, pandemic, it's been fantastic the way that all registrants have stepped up wherever you work within healthcare uh, we're you know some of you will work in the NHS but some of you won't but I think we're all part of the NHS of the sorry the healthcare family um, and everybody stepped up and um, delivered what they can during the part the paramedic pan, paramedic pandemic uh, but I also want to take particular thanks to those of you who might have joined us today who've joined the temporary register so particularly those students who were third years who are now probably registering or are registrants now but also the people who had had um, 
relinquished their you know their license and their registration with us over the last three years who joined us so that was a massive step so thank you very much to those people for for doing that that was a, a real big help but also thank you you know thank you for all the work you've been you've been actually doing I've loved these these little rainbows that have been in everybody's windows I've really appreciated them uh, and I think I'd just like to show to celebrate the fact that the NHS and healthcare generally, uh, British people are generally extremely proud of our NHS. And I think it's made us even more proud during this, this process, hasn't it really? Um, because it's made us think about the impact um, and the effect that the NHS has on our everyday lives, really. I think that's really important. Um, just to say that we've also experienced an increase in um, people applying for the professionals, professionals professional jobs because of COVID. I think nursing is up, nursing registration. So I'm a nurse by profession. As I said, it's up 16% this year, which is pretty amazing. Um, you know, that's really, really important. And I think it, it will change things for, for years to come. So another Slido before we go, and I'm going to get my phone and, and just ask you this question as well. Now, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a contentious question I'm asking you, but I'm asking you what comes to mind? What do you think of what word comes to mind when you think of the HCPC? So the GMC, the General Medical Council, did this uh, this sort of research a few years ago, and it looked at the it looked at how we were viewed by registrants, and I think that's really important because today is also about us listening to you. All right, so it's it's about us hearing your questions and what's important to you, but it's about us listening to you and thinking what is important to you and what you know. What are the things that worry you? So please don't be worried about putting any words up here. I actually don't mind. I'm not, I won't take it personally. No swear words, please. I think that's the important thing. Uh, <laughs> I think that would be really nice if it was no swear words. Um, but if you want to put anything else up, that's absolutely fine as well. Any words would be, would be really nice. We know there's a little bit of a lag here. So sometimes when uh, you're typing in, they, they may not, the things may not hit screen. Um, straight away. Um, so you might find that there's there's a little bit of a lag. Um, so I do apologise that and uh, thank you for the person who's been honest enough to say terror. Um, certainly when I, I used to work for the General Medical Council and as I said we do the, did this this um, we did this thing with uh, our registrants then um, and it was exactly the same sort of things. I also think it's important for you to realise that you pay your registrations fee and actually it's important that you influence what the HCPC does and how it can support you. So if there are things that come up today that we think in the question and answer text that we think we might need to do something about or we pass to a, the proper person within our um, within our organisation, then we'll pass that information into those people. And the next event, we'll let you know what we've actually done with that, because that's really important. Oversight and integrity, you're right. Uh, that's lovely that somebody's proud of the HCPC and it's we are protecting the public. That is our role to protect the public. Um, we do write fantastic professional standards. We're going to talk about those in a while, but thank you very much. Empathy, clients and professionals. Thank you very much. That's that's perfect. Thank you for, for doing that and, and sort of humouring us to find out what you actually think of us. So I'm going to close that now. Or there's a couple more things coming in a minute. Lengthy, somebody's saying lengthy. I'm not sure what lengthy in relation to, but and cost. Yeah, you have to pay your registration fee. As a nurse, I have to pay my registration fees. Um, that's the way of the world. And CPD portfolio. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's really, really appreciated. So going back to my uh, slides, um, my next slide, sorry, is about what the HCPC does. And I think you've got a really good understanding, so I'm not going to dwell heavily on this. But, um, you know, we, we write the standards, we set the standards for the profession, for training and for education. And we actually approve the courses that meet those standards. There's 188 providers of courses across the UK and we actually uh, regular, we actually quality assure those. I think that's really important. Um, we also register you and, and I'm hoping there are some registrants on the call. There might be some students as well. Um, and I don't know that if you know during COVID, but we actually extended the CPD uh, audits for quite a lot of professional groups and we actually extended the renewal period by a month for quite a lot of professional groups to give you a little bit of a little bit of a leeway in this sort of really difficult time. And we've spent a lot of time changing our processes in, re in registration. And I don't know also if you know that actually you can pay quite a lot of things online now but at, with the HCPC by bank transfer. So that's really good. We also hold you to account though. And that's what we're going to be talking about today because it's our standards that you're held to account against. OK, so we write a variety of standards of guidance, something I, our policy team are incredibly proud of. Olivia um, is in our policy team, so she'd be very happy to take any questions about our standards and guidance that are worrying you, particularly at this time. Um, but we write the standards of education and training. I already talked about the importance of education and training. Um, we write the standards that underpin those and then the providers interpret those. 
And we also write the standards of proficiency and those are written for every profession. Um, and later on, I'm going to talk to you about the fact that we're actually consulting on those at the moment. So that's a really important thing to, that you actually know. We write the CPD, the Continuing Professional Development um, Standards, um, and you will know very a lot about those. I also have to, to um, re-register every every three years for nurses, um, and I know a lot about the CPD that I have to do. Um, but we're, what we're really going to focus on in these 10 standards webinars is the standards of conduct, performance and ethics. And those are the ones we're actually going to be looking at. And those are the ones that actually guide everything you do. So if you read those, this is what the public expect of you. So what if you asked a member of the public, these are things that they would expect of us as healthcare professionals. I'm not in the HCPC, but all of you registrants and that's what we're going to be looking at today so one more slide before one more sort of voting before we before we carry on with a bit of content about what standard one says now i'd like to know before we start how would you rate your knowledge and understanding of standard one now so for example if i said to you how many parts of standard one are there do you know now i have to be honest and say that as a, a nurse um, i before I worked in regulation, I didn't read greatly our code of conduct, although we've recently written, rewritten and um, the NMC's rewritten their code of conduct. Um, but you might feel that you know it inside out, and I would think that's fantastic if you did. You, you'd be amazing if you did. But be honest if you don't, that's absolutely fine as well. And I'm going to allow that to be open for a little while, just because there is sometimes, as I said, a little bit of a lag. And it's absolutely lovely to see that uh, some of you know it fantastically inside out and back to front and some of you may be teachers on the line so you may even be teaching the standards and guidance I think that's quite interesting as well because when you teach it's a bit like um, I've not long been in this job but once I had to teach about standards and guidance you learn an awful lot more don't you about them uh, because you have to know them inside out and back to front um, when you're teaching them because you don't want any difficult questions from your students and I can see that they're, they're, they're I can see that from my results on the screen that there's a massive range of experience. So thank you for being honest. I really appreciate that. And what we're going to do at the end, just to say, is right at the end of this session, I'm actually going to ask you to uh, rate yourself again. So see what you think again. There's a few more votes coming in. So I'm sorry to sort of leave it a few more time. I can see, and I'm not sure if you can see on your screen, how many uh, votes have actually been in. But I am aware of this little slight lag when I'm talking um, that I'm going to just give you a few more minutes to actually to actually see what we get, if that's OK. So I'm going to leave that if that's all right. And we're going to move on to the next slide. But thank you for your honest votes. I do appreciate that. And we'll see what it's like at the end. So standard one, standard one of the standards of conduct, performance and ethics. This is the first standard and we're going to do this series. It's about once every month we do these uh, sessions. I will talk about the next one um, later, but that's really important. But why have the standards? You know, why do we bother? Why, why are they written for us as healthcare professionals? Well, there's several reasons. I think it's interesting that they're not prescriptive because they can't be. They cannot cover every single ethical dilemma that you come across. So they have to, how you meet them has to depend on your practice and your context and the context you work in. Now, because of that, it's a high level framework and we ask you to use your professional judgment um, and we are going to look at professional judgment and how you use your professional judgment during these seminars. But that's really important that you're aware of that. And because of that, they give you the autonomy and the flexibility really to you know, adapt them according to your own practice. But fundamentally, it is your job to meet all those standards. All right. So that's really, really important. OK, so that's really important. Brilliant. So next slide. So my next slide, if you don't mind. Oop, hang on a second. Actually, I'm going to delete that next slide. I'm going to move on to the next one if that's OK. My next slide. Sorry. Whoops, bit of a technological thing. So my next slide, standard one. I've already talked about, I've already asked you what your knowledge of standard one was. There's four components of standard one, all right? So treating services users and carers with respect, making sure you've got consent. I know you know about that, but we'll just give a quick reminder. Challenging discrimination, which is something that I feel particularly passionate about, and I'm gonna talk quite a bit about, and maintaining appropriate boundaries, because those are some of the things that we know that can get registrants in difficulties with us, and that's something we definitely don't want. We're here to support you, to give you the information so that you don't get into difficulties. That's the really important part, really. So let's take them one by one. So the first one, treating service users and carers with respect. I'm gonna pause for a second while you just have a read of those three things because I think that they're they're quite lengthy sentences but I didn't want to not include them for you so you can actually have a look at them I think they're really important uh, 
Okay. Not very good at silence. So that's one of my healthcare professional things that I'm not very good at. And I'm sure we all need a reminder to use silence uh, when we're caring for patients. Sometimes we don't use it as well as we, we should do. And I'm one of those one of those people. So respecting privacy and dignity, working in partnership with service users is really important. And main, helping service users maintain their health and well-being is, is sort of fundamental. Really, really good. So let's look at what um, the good news is, because there is a lot of good news related to this. Um, now, they. There's a survey um, and the link is actually there that you can have a look at the survey, but the survey asked adult inpatients whether they feel that they were treated with respect and dignity whilst in hospital. And the good news is that over 80 percent of stand of patients in hospital were. Now, as I said, I know that some of you don't work in hospital, but I think that that probably reflects all across all healthcare settings, actually, because I think that the trust that patients hold us in is incredible, isn't it? So I think that it probably is the same across all healthcare settings. And it, that links very much onto patients being involved in the care that they have. Um, and again, decisions about the care that they have, sorry. And again, really good news, over 80% of um, our clients feel that they are involved in decision making. So I think we should feel really proud, really proud of those details. And I think that's really good. We can always improve things. We can always improve stuff. And that's what reflection's about, isn't it really? reflecting and improving. Now, the HCPC commissioned some research where we wanted to look at professionalism and what it meant to our registrants and students. And we asked three groups of, um, we asked three groups of professionals what they actually felt uh, about both professionalism and unprofessionalism. And this is what somebody said, and I, I wouldn't absolutely love it if anybody volunteers to be that chiropody or podiatry student and can be that person who said that quote, because out of that whole report, this was the quote that I picked up that I thought was the most powerful. I think that the biggest thing really is when you actually see somebody showing respect, I think, um, and the patient, because that kind of stands out. And I'm going to talk later about role models, but I'm sure that for all of us, we've got a role model who we saw being respectful and showing, demonstrating respect, privacy and dignity with our patients. For me, um, when I was a third year student, I remember vividly a staff nurse sitting down. Um, I was following her because she was my mentor, uh, sitting down with a patient who was clearly, uh, you know, dying at his end of life. Um, and I remember vividly the patient opening his eyes and saying to the staff nurse, we were giving we were giving him a wash um, and saying to the staff nurse, am I dying nurse? And instead of me, I would have I don't know what I would have done to be honest. I definitely wouldn't have been able to answer his. Um, I probably would have said something eminently stupid. The staff nurse said to him, yes, Mr Jones, I think you are. And incredibly respectful and empathetic way. And what she did later she, after that was she, we were in the middle of a wash, but she didn't carry on the wash. She sat down next door to him. She held his hand and she said, so how, how are you feeling? You know, and she continued that conversation. Is there anything I can do? You know, and, and that for me was the epitome of somebody who shows respect for a patient. And we've all got role models that we remember that we wanted to be like. So she was the person that I wanted to be like the whole of my nurse training. Um, she was amazing. So she showed respect and it, respect was shown in her behaviour. So I think respect does stand out and it's about those little things. And I think it links back to Dr. Kate Granger. Remember I talked about Hello My Name is uh, when we first started um, and she talked about the respect and that she was shown when she was a patient and she talked about the little things and they aren't little things but they're about things like sitting down with a patient when you're breaking bad news, sitting down next to them, holding their hand if it's appropriate and I think that's been difficult during Covid, holding their hand, touching them, being alongside them on that journey and I think that's really important. So those things are, are really fundamental to, to respect. So that's a little bit about respect. Um, and in our report, we, we sort of identified what professionalism respect sort of looked like. Um, and we recognise those things, empathy and compassion, being polite, very important, particularly these days, being kind, being trustworthy and being honest. Those things that can get you into difficulty and can have you can result in complaints, particularly coming to the HCPC, particularly about honesty. Being a good communicator goes without saying and putting service users and patients first, treating them equally and without prejudice. And that links on to the, the third one I'm going to talk about, which is um, challenging discrimination and being competent, understanding limit limitations and reflecting, fundamental reflecting. And as I already said, reflection is the key, really, isn't it? So second one, making sure we've got consent. Um, you know, it's something that you've had drilled into you right from the start. I know of your your professional your professional career and and when you were students, gaining that consent, particularly as as students, I know getting consent is really important. And 
just wanted to remind you, I um, hope you don't think I'm teaching you to suck eggs, as they say, but the patient must be competent. They must have capacity to give consent. They must have sufficient information. They must be able to give their consent freely. That's really important as well. So they shouldn't be under duress and you can change your consent. You can withdraw your consent at any time. So those three things, three components are really important about, about consent. Um, and we know that consent issues have changed dramatically during the pandemic. Um, I had a look at uh, all your professional bodies and I had a, just picked out one um, professional body that I thought the Chartered Society of Physios. I picked you probably because you're the most, the biggest Reg registrant that we have on the register at the HCPC um, and I picked out a consent form template for face to face consultations during COVID that I thought was particularly was particularly useful. So thank you to the Chartered Society for that. I thought that was really, really good. OK, so that's a little bit, a little bit of a reminder about consent, but I think you know quite a lot about consent. Discrimination. Um, so this is, again, something I feel quite passionately about. It talks about not discriminating against service users and also challenging colleagues. For me, this is really important as well. Challenging colleagues if they've discriminated against or are discriminating against service users, carers and colleagues. That's really important. So um, while I've been while I've been doing lots of reading about challenging discrimination, I came across a fantastic podcast uh, YouTube clip, sorry, from the um, Australian Army commander. Um, he is well, I've forgotten his name. I've, I've got his name written down. Sorry, David Morrison, um, who does a fantastic YouTube clip and because he feels that in the Australian Army at the point that he was talking about there was discrimination against women um, and he's very strong in his language about discrimination and he actually says in his YouTube clip that if you are somebody who is discriminating against women or any other discriminatory act then you shouldn't be part of the army um, and he makes a very strong message and he's very angry in his YouTube clip which I think really makes it very very powerful so I would urge you to say that but for me it's that quote the standard that you walk past is the standard you accept and that's going to lead me nicely onto the next uh, the next sort of slide which talks about overhearing now I I've been in this situation where I've overheard things that I've been concerned about and I've wanted to challenge them but felt I couldn't. I think a lot of people can maybe empathise with that. So for example, you overhear one of the new phlebotomists and I made that up because this is a made up one. Uh, I can't get blood from Mrs Jones because she's just too fat. That's a discriminatory, a discriminatory statement. And another one here, you overhear a patient as you walk through the waiting room outside your clinic whispering to another patient. I don't want to see so-and-so as he won't understand what I say and he isn't from here you know again discriminating against people or healthcare professionals who are registered or qualified in another country or came come from another culture and I think it's really important that we think about this one because while I've been working at the local hospital um, during the pandemic what's been really interesting to me was that over 36 percent of the doctors in the hospital that I was working with trained overseas so there's absolutely no way that the NHS could ever cope uh, unless it relies on healthcare professionals coming from many many places so it's really important and I don't know if you know that actually out of the registrants that come to the um, HCPC every year last year 2000 I'm going to look down at the number but 2233 new international medical graduates or graduates who are using European mutual recognition come, came onto the, the register at the HCP. So, so that's a massive amount. And, and again, we wouldn't be able to cope, cope unless they were there. So it's about challenging that, challenging those things that we we hear and we think, did we really hear that? Did I, did I hear what somebody actually said? But it's how you do it. And I don't know about you, but I've always struggled with how. I'm not fantastic at confrontation. I never have been. Um, so I also found this, this other slide um, really interesting because it enabled me to think about the, the passive things. So on the left hand side are all the passive things that you know are discriminatory and are unprofessional. And then it moves up towards through the passive aggressive and the aggressive things. But actually for me, there's something about those passive events that we don't like to pick people up on because none of us likes confrontation basically and I hate it. Um, but also if, they, if we don't talk to them about it, the small things turn into big things. How often have you been at a meeting where, you know, somebody's been late and nobody said anything and then blow me down the next meeting, they're late again and still nobody says anything. We're all the same, but it's important to think about how we might actually 
challenge that challenge that unprofessional behaviour or any discrimination. So I, I throw out to you a couple of examples of ways we might do it. and we may if you are interested in this, we may actually pick this up at a later event, um, but it's quite important. So the first one is the coffee cup conversation and this um, actually started the word coffee cup conversation started off in America and what it clearly says is that if you feel that somebody's said something that's discriminatory, then just think about having a quiet word with them. And they suggest it's over a coffee. All right. Now, these days it's it's not easy to say, let's go for a coffee together. You can't. But what you can probably say is at the end of the meeting, or could I just have a quick chat with you before when everybody's gone? Or could we just catch up later? Or could we fix the time in our diary to have a chat? You know, it doesn't have to be anything major. And you start by telling them that you appreciate them and what a good job they're doing. But then you point out the, the thing that's, you know, either discriminatory or unprofessional. For example, I'm, I'm reading it out because I think it's a really good one. I noticed that you didn't wash your hands when you entered that patient's room. All right. It's a small thing, but actually, if you don't tell somebody, I think hand washing probably these days, although is something we're very, very hot on at the moment. I throw out another um, an, another sort of slide for you is that if you're planning a sort of coffee cup conversation, these are things you might think about. You've got to be respectful. You've got to be prepared. And again, I can't tell you that I need to step back sometimes and get prepared for conversations that are difficult. Write down a few words that you want to actually say. Is it in a private space? Always in a private space. That's really important. It should be non-judgmental and non-defensive. Really important. And another way of um, having a difficult conversation I put forward for you is something called CUDSA. Um, confront the behaviour understand each other's proposition because we need to understand where the other person's coming from. Define the problem. So I've noticed that I picked up that I heard you say. Yeah, so identifying the problem, searching for a solution and agreeing a way forward. And as I said, we can pick this up at a later event. Um, and the last one, the last slide I wanted to include for this part of the standard one uh, is really that this one. Every time you overhear something hurtful, I want you to do something kind for somebody because kindness is going to be so fundamental now and going forward in the pandemic. But do remember that we also, um, as part of our standards, have um, a standard particularly or a part of the standards particularly looks at raising concerns. And again, we will look at this one in a future um, a future event. But it clearly says that if somebody's behaviour oversteps that boundary or that threshold, then you do need to raise a concern. And what might be useful for you to reflect on after the session is who would you raise that concern to? Is there somebody that you know that you could talk to that you could raise that concern to? So just just have a think about that might be something you might find quite useful. But there's certainly really some good stuff on our website about, about raising a, raising concerns and things like that. So the fourth part of the standard one is about keeping relationships with service users and carers professional. It goes without saying something that's drilled into us as healthcare professionals from day one. Um, and I would just want to, to point out another resource on our website that you might find quite useful, something we don't like particularly like talking about. What I think it is important to talk about it is fitness to practice. And we have some case studies. It, as I said, it's part of our, our fundamental, it's part of our statutory obligation. Um, but we have some case studies of fitness to practice concerns. And there's two case studies, particularly in the, these case studies, that particularly focus on unprofessional behaviour. There's one about social media, which I think is really interesting. And there's another one about unprofessional relationships with a patient. So they are really worth a read. And I would um, I know that um, hopefully Holly or Olivia or Kelly will put a little link to those in the in the chat, which would be quite nice. But we will send you the links to these to these after the event. Uh, just a little bit about social media. Um, it's becoming a bill of concern and particularly I think during the pandemic pan pandemic it's it's a concern it's, it's a way of us all keeping in touch during the pandemic so there is a massive learning from and certainly even from I certainly followed a couple of doctors from Italy when the pandemic first started who gave us a lot of information about how they were caring for their Covid patients and I'm sure that you have followed um, sort of people that you trust in your professions and they will give you lots of useful information. Social media is a massive force for good. It contains some really, really useful information and it connects a lot of people, but it can be detrimental. And I just want you to urge you, we will be doing our next session on social media um, amongst other things, but I just want to urge you to today, two things, check your privacy settings on your social media account and think about your digital footprint. So I'm lucky I don't particularly have a fantastic digital footprint because I came to social media quite late, um, but my children certainly do. And just a reminder that 10% of employers, employers actually look at our social media um, digital footprint before they employ us. So how scary is that really? So it's important to think about your digital footprint.
Uh, this is a bit of a plug for our next event because our next event is uh, on standard two, which is communicating appropriately and effectively. And one of the ways of communicating is by social media. So we will be looking at social media during this event. And as I said, um, we are experiencing lots of people using social media inappropriately from footballers to athletes to whatever. But we want to make sure that you're not getting into those situations. So we want to cover it in this event. So we will be covering quite a lot about that. And it's on the 15th of October at 4 p.m. When we send you the post email that we will send you with lots of links, we'll also remind you of this date so you can save the date in your calendar, um, which is which is quite useful. And while I'm thinking about it, we'll also send you a survey for whether you found this useful or not, and you can download a, a certificate. I've already said that before, but I just want to reinforce the point. So any other resources that we um, have for you, I'm going to just whiz through a few resources that I think might be quite useful. And, and I want you to use the uh, the chat bar if you don't mind during this session. Um, so that's really quite nice. And if you've got any questions you want to ask, um, that's really useful. And I can see there's lots of questions coming through. So I'm going to ask uh, Kelly in a moment if she can speak to, to talk about a few. But we'll we'll go on to a few more slides first and then we'll, we'll see if the actual microphone on Kelly's machine actually works now. So a couple of resources that I think might be quite useful to you. Sorry, my screen's frozen now. Um, there you go. Uh, I mentioned the COVID hub. Um, our standards colleagues, Olivia, um, sorry, our policy colleagues, Olivia is one of them, uh, spent a lot of time at the beginning of the pandemic pulling together uh, some evidence for you so that you can work safely and effectively during COVID and giving you some advice on some of the problems that were coming up, um, not least about things like gaining consent. Um, and it's also about supporting your well-being. There's some fantastic well-being resources. You know, it's, we're very bad as healthcare professionals at looking after ourselves and thinking about ourselves. So, never more has that never more has that been has that been important. Um, we've also got a great part of our website called Your Stories. Um, and I'll, I've just picked one, um, my COVID story, Christiana. Christiana is an OT um, and she talks about how she's had to change her practice during COVID, which is, which is really, really interesting. We've got a suite of stories, but what we want is more. So this is a bit of a call, call for help, really. Um, I'm not sure if Adiola's on the on the line, but um, Adiola is our fantastic press office lady um, and she wants to hear from you if you're interested in writing a story. Now, they don't have to be long, a couple of hundred words maximum. You can either write it yourself or um, Adiola will ghostwrite it for you. Gosh, I'd love somebody to ghostwrite something for me. I think that's absolutely amazing. She will actually take your story. She'll phone you up. She'll listen to your story. She'll ghostwrite it and then she'll check it out with you. She'll send it to you. Um, and then wouldn't it be amazing to have your story on the HCP and your picture on the HCPC website? I think that would be something you would be very proud of. So there's a link there and we will put Adiola's um, email address in our chat box because you only have to drop her an email. She'd love to hear from you. Um, we love, I think stories are so powerful and I think it makes us feel like we're not the only ones dealing with these issues during the pandemic. We're not the only ones having to adapt our practice and hearing the new normal and feeling like what on earth are we doing and how's, how long is this going to carry on? So do write your stories because um, that, that would really help. The other thing I'm going to ask for a call for help from is a consultation. Um, we are writing, as I said to you earlier, I mentioned the consultation of the consultation of um, standards of proficiency. That's open till the end of October, so you've got quite a while to get that sorted now. So that that shouldn't be too long. That should um, that's another month for you to write your replies. It's really important for you to um, write what you think. It's a bit like these these um, sessions, really. The HCPC can use your can answer questions and can take what you're concerned about and we can turn it into something that's useful if you feel it's useful to you so it's your method of influencing what we do so do do write our consultation all right um we're also um consult con consulting consulting on our corporate strategy or the, the HCPC corporate strategy. So this corporate strategy is really important because it, it sort of defines the way we're going to take forward the HCPC. And that's really important. And it's important again that you have an influence in that. So there's a, um, a link there um, for the events website, events email. And again, they want to hold focus groups with you. So again, they'd be very happy to speak to you or for you to join a focus group. And we would love you because again, if you don't get involved, it's a bit like planning application, isn't it? Unless you say something and you contribute, uh, we then can't moan, can we? Because I'm I'm one of those who moans, but then thinks, oh, I didn't actually say anything about it. So try and get involved. It's really important. Even at this difficult time, I know your, your time is extremely valuable to you. 
So we have fantastic stuff on our website. As I said, influence, tell us what we don't do, what we do do well. That's really useful and meeting our standards, really helpful. Um, so what have we covered? Well, we've looked really at all the standards. We've looked at standard one, sorry, in all the parts of standard one, the four parts of standard one. And I'm hoping that you found that useful reminder most for most of you. Some of it is incredibly um, you know, useful, but some of it might be new information, but some of it certainly for you won't be new information. Um, and what I want to do now is I want to ask you what you thought of today. This is your opportunity to tell us again what you think about today. And I'm going to ask you the first question that I asked you before. So a bit of a sneaky one, really, because I asked you this one before. So after this session, how would you now rate your standards, your sort of, sort of your knowledge, your understanding of standard one? So as I said, we talked about the four components. Oh, somebody somebody said 10. I'm loving it. But, you know, I understand if that you feel that, you know, it's still not very good. That's OK as well, because I really don't take these things personally. <laughs> and it also feel for me, it's something about if you don't feel that we've hit the mark with you with these events, then we need to know because we're spending time and energy devising them, making them useful for you. We want to make sure they are actually useful for you. Um, so I'm going to go while um, those are, Kelly, I don't know if you can speak. So if you can't, I'm really sorry, but if you can speak, it would be really nice. Um, go for it, Kelly. What can you say? What questions yes, have we had so, today? Um, I, I think the audience can hear me, Kim, even if you can't. I can't hear you, Kelly. No, they can hear me, the bit, audience. You can, you can hear, you can speak. OK, go for it. So um, questions. So you've all been very shy so far at the moment, so please do post questions if you have any. Um, we've had um, we had a question about a length of time for fitness to practice, which is an absolutely fair question and we understand why you'd be asking about that. So I just want to mention that we do have some improvements going on with FTP. It's been ongoing for a little while now and um, those should start to see really some improvements around our length of time, the quality of the work we do, plus our engagement. While you're with speaking, you. Kelly, I'm going to move to the next slide if that's all right. So. Oh. Absolutely. The next voting um, slide, which and, is the, the word um, poll, exactly as we did before. So my apologies for interrupting you. Do you want to carry on? Sorry. Um, so the uh, another question that came in was about boundaries and um, in particular really working remotely now. Obviously a very um, interesting topic, something that we're all having to do, including ourselves. We're all sitting in different parts <coughs> of the UK this morning. Um, and Olivia's posted an answer there and also linked to um, some useful blogs on our website that our policy team, Olivia's colleague, um, have helped to produce for you. So um, please have a look at that guidance on there and I think that will probably help you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kelly. And I'm sorry about the technical hitch. I can't hear what Kelly says, but you can, which is fantastic. And I can see that you're putting up, um, up words for me, which is fantastic. Um, professionalism, thank you. Lots of people have written professionalism. That's really nice to hear. Uh, standards, good, and we're a regulator and hopefully we are supportive. We we want to be supportive to you. I think that's really important for us. Expensive. I get the fee. I get the feeling that the fees is an issue from the one somebody the word that somebody said before. And again, that's okay. That's okay for us to be able to feed that information back to the HCPC. Um, quality service. That's nice. You're proud, which is absolutely lovely. And you feel that we're fair. That's that's they're actually actually really nice comments so really I do appreciate I do appreciate those um, so I'm going to go to the next um, slide if that's all right so uh, the next slide is a really quick one it's a yes or a no answer how like you always get asked this at the end of training sessions but it actually does help so how likely are you to recommend this training to your colleagues it's a really useful one as for us as well because you are going to be going out there probably even in a few minutes going out there um, and meeting your colleagues. Some of you might be working alone, but some of you will have, usually, we all have friends who are doing the same profession. My best friend is a nurse. I'm sure the same for you. Um, your friends are in your healthcare professional profession um, and you might be recommending the HCPC um, uh, to, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, I had a something clicked, which means you couldn't see the results. So my apologies for that. You now can see the results. It wasn't a yes, no. Again, my apologies. It was a rating scale, but I'm glad that most of you have said that you would like to recommend. That's that's really that's that's really nice. That's really nice to know. Thank you for your comments. OK, and the last slide before the end one is this is a yes, no. So uh, is has this session helped you reflect on your practice? Yes or no? So for me, um, when I go to training, I always think, are there any moments where I go, oh, that's a useful little point. 
I hadn't thought about that. That's a that's quite interesting. That tiny little nugget. And I usually uh, at the end of my um, training session, I'm I'm quite good actually. I have a little book, a little blue book. I don't know why it's blue, but I have a little blue book, and I usually write down a couple of words to enable me to reflect. Um, that I've learned from the session and I find that I find personally that quite useful. So thank you for that. That was a really quick vote. That didn't take long at all. Lots of you have voted for that one. I can see that. And my last question to you is have your knowledge, has your knowledge, sorry, of the HCPC improved? Yes, no, or it was already good or OK? Um, I'd like to know. That would just be nice to know. But again, it gives us a bit of reinforcement that whether we think this is useful or not. Um, and we're, you know, it's just really nice. This is a really quick, a quick one. And thank you for Kelly for saying that the session has been recorded. I should have said that at the beginning, but we are recording this session, which is quite nice to actually know, isn't it really? And as I said, a bit of a plug before we finish. And we, again, we will send you the links. There is going to be a little bit bigger survey with 10 questions for you, but do you know what? The more information we can get from the people who came to the session, the better. And I know your time is valuable, but I can promise you that those the survey will take a minimum of five minutes, five to ten minutes to complete. And I can't tell you how valuable it is when we're developing these sessions because we really need to know what was good and what was bad about the session. So thank you very much for that. I'll turn that that um that off. I really do appreciate appreciate that. So and as I said, when you um when you complete the survey, uh, you do actually get a certificate. Um, a certificate that you write your name in. So we trust you to write your name in. It's a certificate you then put in your ePortfolio and you can use it for your CPD, which I think is quite nice. So um, finding out more and getting in touch with us, myself and Kelly are part of the Professional Liaison Service. If you think, oh, I'd quite like some of these sessions for my students, my colleagues, I'd like to get together a group of people, particularly the students, I think we would be totally happy to repeat this and other sessions to anybody else that you'd like to put us in front of. We're only too happy. We'd love to, again to come out and see you, but we can certainly do lots and lots with lots and lots virtually. Um, our registrations team I already talked about, they are doing an amazing job. Did you know last year they had 58,000 emails? I, I couldn't actually believe 58,000 emails in a year. Um, it was, and the average working time to get them back is three working days, a reply, which is again pretty incredible. So a policy team who Olivia belong to, if we if you send us questions we can transfer them to Olivia. Olivia has got a, an inbox which is the policy inbox that she's quite happy to take your questions from and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That was always good, always a good thing to do. Um, but I'd like to, to finish really with a massive thank you. Uh, I know I said it at the beginning but it goes without saying that you are part of uh, the health service family and what, what you do and what you have done during the pandemic has been amazing. So thank you from the HCPC and from myself and my colleagues. Um, you're doing an amazing job, but be kind to yourself and take care of yourself and others. All right. Sorry to preach, but that's really important. I think that's really important. Um, I am going to end the uh, webinar in a second, and that means that it literally does go off the screen. <laughs> but if you have a last chance for any questions, if there's anything else, Kelly, is there anything else that's that's coming up that you feel you'd like to, to say? No, again, people have been fairly quiet on the question front. Um, we have posted quite a lot of links for the things that you've been talking about. So hopefully um, that will give you any answers to anything that you um, wanted to ask us. But if not, as we've mentioned, um, the policy inbox or the professional liaison um, inbox with the people to contact. So do do get in touch with us if you have anything more. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, that's fantastic. And I know Holly, if she could speak, but I'm not going to rely on technology, would be plugging the focus groups for the corporate strategy. And I know that Adiola um, would also be saying, please, please get me in touch and I'll go strike you an article. And wouldn't that be fantastic? And do get in touch with our consultations as well. So lots of information um, and I hope that you've enjoyed it and have a lovely afternoon and uh, be kind. Thank you very much for your time.